storytelling is very important. Um, yeah, people got to be able to connect with it. They got to want to watch it. They want to be able to forget about what's going on in their world, at least for an hour. Like when I watch, when I go watch movies, I want to watch something that's going to make me not think about like the flight I got to catch or the dentist appointment I didn't make or I got to uh, I got to go book or uh, or um, whatever went wrong or I just want to be able to go forget about something and decompress. When I travel with Eddie Guerrero for a while, uh, <laughs> I would travel with him. And Chris Benoit, but I couldn't afford the, the hotels they stayed at. Their contract was way better better than mine. Like my, I was on a, a a Holiday Inn at the most budget, at the most uh, contract, where they were at Marriotts and stuff every night. And um, I, I don't even know if they maybe their rooms were getting paid for in their deal. I have no idea. But but I didn't want to travel with them. But they said, "Oh wait, well, well, we'll just split rooms each night." So and as much as I don't like sharing rooms, I did with them. So one night I would stay with Chris, and one night I would stay with Eddie. And when I would stay with Eddie, what we had in common is we both, and sometimes we'd watch a movie that we've seen over and over and over again, but that movie somehow would take us out of thinking about our the, the anxieties of our life, or the, the deadlines and the places we got to be. And Because it's really hard to shut down after a, a match or really hard to shut down after a pay-per-view or really hard to shut down after something that might have went wrong and, and, and you're trying to figure out why it went wrong. Or, or to come down after something that went amazingly right and not go to a bar and chase uh, a negative. Like, so, like, when I tell people, like, Nicole debuted, right? You didn't, we don't know this. Nikki B debuted. Uh, we missed it. We, I was on the road and I was in Scotland or I was somewhere and um, I don't, I, you didn't know because I didn't know she was going to do it, right? It was just a last minute thing. She's now, uh, welcome to wrestling, Nikki. Uh, she's managing, not managing, but she's uh, seconding Ruthie J, another one I trained, Ruthie J. No, Ruthie, you know Ruthie. So Nicole's like a bodyguard type of thing. So she debuted. But when she wrote me, wherever I was in the world, I don't know if I was in Scotland or if I was up there doing that Michigan show. Um, I said, listen, you, and she was doing it at the brewery for CCW at the, uh, in Hialeah there, uh, the unbranded brewery, which that crowd is crazy hot. It's like an old ECW crowd kind of like. It's that loud and, and intense. And I said, you're not going to experience. There's no drug you've ever done. There's no alcohol you've ever drank, and there's nothing that's going to match that high you're going to feel when this happens because that crowd's hot, and if everything goes right, that high she's going to feel. I said, you know, the first hit of cocaine, you know, your first drink of alcohol, whatever people are addicted to, you know, like that high, there's not going to be any high more than that debut where she did wrestling and the peak in that spot she was in in that type of match. Where she was. No, it wasn't WrestleMania and this and this and that. But that first high, that first involvement in front of that crowd, it's a very, very hot crowd. Eight, nine hundred people jammed in there, out of their minds, drinking and loud. And um, and I, I, what my advice to her was, listen, you're going to feel such a high when you leave there. You're going to want to go and, and, and try to maintain that high and chase that high. You might go out and want to drink or do something or this and that and that. I said, don't go out. And cancel out a good high with a negative high, because then it's going to take away from that. And it, the drinking or this, something's going to happen or, or whatever, or you're going to feel like crap the next day, because you're never going to be able to obtain that high. You're not going to, there's no alcohol, no cocaine, nothing's going to make you feel as high as professional wrestling can. And nothing will make you feel as low as professional wrestling can. And I think we went over this a few episodes back, right? It, it's, it's, it's an incredible feeling. So I told her, be careful. Just try to enjoy that high. Ride off that high. Remember that high. Don't go out there and cancel it out with a neg another negative high and keep chasing other highs. You know what I mean? Just work on wrestling and, and know that, you know, you could have uh, maybe reach an equal amount of high as you apply yourself throughout the wrestling world. But just don't go doing it with negatives. So uh, Eddie and myself, we, we, we would do things with negatives, alcohol, and drugs, right? So, so we'd both, our uh, movies, we would go and escape. That would take us down. We'd go and transfer, ah, oh, this moment, and, and get into a movie or a character. And like you said, we'd watch something and come down from the day or, or, or forget about how bad a day went or, or come down from the good high without doing a negative high, chasing a negative thing like alcohol or cocaine or pills or substance abuse, right? Because it's so easy to do. It's there. People want to hand it to you and everything else. So, um, I, And I think that's our world, right? So wrestling and we're trying to figure it out there. 
with the people, and this is going back to Kofi and the storytelling, this and that, what I believe is I believe that they're having a day like that too, and they want to be able to forget about something. They want to forget about their day at work or their boss giving them shit, or or maybe they had a, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, I. I don't know if they could compare their good high to, to going to a movie like like we would do to come down and not chase it a negative, but I don't know, but I think it helps. It's just it's escape from reality. Professional wrestling to a lot of the world, a majority of the world is an escape from, from reality. Uh, movies are escape from my reality, professional wrestling, you know, like, you know, I can always say you're, you're, you're my, my reality is your, your nightmares. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, could, you could go on with all this stuff. We can go back and forth. I can go back and forth trying to explain it, but, not really going to explain it. If you, if you know it, you know it. If you know what I'm talking about, you get it. You know what I mean?